Hello, this is Dampy Longnose, and welcome to a Halo 4 gameplay commentary. The gameplay you're going to be seeing is a game of Infinity Team Slayer on the map Adrift, and it's not going to be the most amazing game you've ever seen. Uh, the reason I actually chose this gameplay uh, was simply because the game was long enough, uh, because I got quite a big topic to talk about uh, in this commentary, and as I'm sure uh, you've seen from the title of the video, uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, things that I believe 343 Industries didn't need to change uh, in Halo 4 when compared to past Halo games. And uh, I'm going to warn you now, uh, a lot of these things are going to be my personal opinion. Uh, there's a good chance that you're simply not going to agree uh, with a lot of the stuff in this list. Uh, the chances are there's going to be at least one thing you're going to disagree with, uh, but that's fine. Share your opinions in the comments below, uh, but just try and be mature about it and understand that uh, this is a, a subjective topic. You know, there's going to be things that some people liked and other people didn't. Uh, but with that, I'm going to go straight now into the list. Uh, the first few are going to be kind of small, minor, little changes that are a little bit irrelevant, uh, but just sort of small annoyances. Uh, and by the end of it, we're going to be going into some bigger, uh, more game-changing changes that 343 Industries uh, made to the Halo sandbox. And starting off, uh, we've got the menus in the lobbies. The fact that you now got to go and read through everyone's names vertically. Why did they change it so you don't just see a list of names? It was so much easier to read and like you could browse through people's file shares and stuff and I don't know why they changed it to make it look all fancy as it is now. I don't think it improves it anyway and it is only a small thing uh, but it's something that I find a little bit annoying and I know another, like a few other people have as well. Uh, number two on the list, uh, you can't look at the score while you're moving. Uh, normally you could quickly press the back button, uh, you could see like who's still alive, how many kills you've got and like how many flag caps, whatever there is. Now when you press the back button to bring up the score, uh, you can't move anymore. And once again, it's a very small thing, but just a small annoyance and something that didn't need to be changed. Uh, number three, uh, the ammo on guns seem to run out way too quickly. Uh, you seem to have not as much ammo and uh, it seems to go really, really quickly. And I think it's to encourage you to go and pick up other people's guns and stuff. Uh, but because with the new settings, uh, it's often uh, very difficult to get other guns unless you're playing Infinity Slayer. Uh, so another small annoying thing, it actually uh, has forced me to always use the... Um, the ammo armor module, whatever it's called, uh, just so I don't run out of ammo all the time. Uh, and number four, uh, no human aerial vehicles. Once again, uh, a relatively small thing, but I was just a little bit annoyed because they put so much focus into big battles and having uh, big vehicular warfare and stuff. And the fact that the only aerial vehicle in multiplayer is the Banshee, uh, I think that games would just be a little bit more exciting if you could have something like a Hornet or a Falcon or a new sort of uh, UNSC vehicle uh, just to play around with and just to make uh, big team battle maps just a little bit more exciting. Uh, number five, uh, they changed the scoring system for when you win. And I know it's not in every game type, it's mainly uh, just Infinity Slayer, but they've changed it now so you've got to get like 600 score rather than like to 50 kills or 60 kills or whatever. And I don't see what the benefit of this is. I can only see it as a negative. One, it's now not as easy to like easily just glance and see like, oh, we've got 30 kills, we need 20 more to win. Now you've got to kind of like work out the score a little bit and I know it's not difficult and I'm sure we're going to get used to it but it just seemed to be something that didn't need to be changed and it also causes a lot of more confusion with people that don't understand the difference of uh, getting score towards your ordinance and getting the score like to where you win. I spoke to a lot of people who think that getting assists and distractions and stuff actually helps to the score for winning the game but your score you get for ordnance and like medals and stuff is separate from the score to winning and I think that that is not particularly clear and a lot of new players uh, sort of don't really understand the differences uh, between the two different scoring systems so for me I think just like a kill count would have been a more effective way of doing it. Uh, the next one is very opinion based and uh, I think my, a few of you might disagree on this but I think that the change from the grenade launcher to the sticky detonator wasn't a good one. And I love the sticky detonator, it's my favourite new gun in the game, I think it's fun to use but I did also love the grenade launcher and I just think it's a bit more fun. I think the ability to bounce the grenade launcher off walls and sort of try and time the explosion and like the EMP blast of the grenade launcher, I just thought made the, like that gun a bit more fun than the sticky detonator and seen as the sticky detonator is basically a, a direct replacement of the grenade launcher, I kind of just preferred the grenade launcher a bit and don't think uh, that it needed to be changed into anything else. Uh, at number seven, weapons despawn way too quickly and I'm talking about 
that when you've got a gun, maybe you just called in your ordinance, you get taken out, you go back to where you just died, and if you, like, you take any longer than 10 seconds, the chances are your gun has disappeared. And a lot of people are saying it's because of the new lighting system that like the game can't handle, like all this stuff scattered on the floor. Uh, but whatever the reason is, I just think it's annoying, and I think most people uh, do find it annoying as well. So that's just uh, another small annoyance that they've added to the game. Uh, and number eight, this is very much another opinion one, uh, the replacement of Firefight with Spartan Ops. I thought that Firefight had a lot more longevity. You could sort of play the same maps over and over again, and it was more uh, customizable. I think that although Spartan Ops is a nice idea, this sort of like recurring storyline and sort of getting new episodes and seasons and stuff, I like the idea of it. But I think that in the long run, uh, there was more flexibility with Firefight and you could sort of keep going back to the same maps over and over and over again uh, where you're unlikely to keep playing through the same Spartanops-like missions uh, over and over again. So personally, uh, I did prefer uh, Firefight over Spartanops. Uh, number nine, uh, the fact that there's no friendly fire in some game modes. And once again, uh, this is mainly Infinity Slayer, uh, but I think it does sort of cause a bit more grenade spamming. I think that... Uh, there's a lot more like situations where there'd be a big group of people or a room full of people and you can just sort of keep just throwing grenades in there or like like firing a rocket in there and you could take out all of the enemy team but your team would be absolutely fine and I don't think uh, that is good for competitive play. Uh, number 10, this is a very much uh, another opinion based one, uh, the ability to join mid game and I know a lot of people do like this feature, they do like the fact that if you're destroying a team and all of the enemy team rage quit then you're going to get some more opponents, you're not going to have to spend like 8 minutes trying to hunt down one player. I do understand that, but I don't think that's enough for like the counter argument of I hate joining mid game. Whenever you join mid game, you're always losing. Like the winning team never quits out, so you always join into a losing team. And even if you are joining into a game where the game's only be go like going for like a minute, even though you still do almost have a full game. They've been able to get all the power weapons, they've like worked towards their ordinance, and plus you don't know where they are, you've kind of been thrown into a game mid-game, and you're a bit disorientated, you don't know where the enemy players are going to be, you don't know where they're going to be spawning, and I just hate joining mid-game so, so much. I think that um, the ability uh, to have other people joining your game isn't enough to make up for it, and people joining mid-game just isn't good for competitive games. It's not like a fair fight when like your opponents change halfway through the game. Uh, another one at number 11, uh, there's no big red X when one of your teammates dies. You can see it on the radar, but it's not the same, and uh, I think that's something that a lot of people find annoying. Uh, number 12, the fact that when you get shot, you're not knocked out of scope, uh, instead you kind of just flinch, and I think that it's a bit more random with the flinching, and I think that getting knocked out of scope and quickly zooming back in took skill, and I think that, especially with sniping now, uh, it's just a little bit too easy. I definitely preferred uh, being knocked out of scope rather than the sort of flinching system they have. Uh, number 13, kill cams, and I didn't really care too much about the idea of kill cams. I didn't think the game needed them, but I didn't care too much, but the fact is, they just don't work properly. They're just so glitchy and laggy and rubbish, and it means you can't have a death screen. It means that teabagging doesn't really work. I don't like the idea of kill cams. It doesn't bother me too much, but it's just something that I don't think free for free industries needed to add to the game. Uh, number 14, the fact that they didn't have a beta. Uh, Halo 3 and Reach both had a beta, and I found that there's been a lot more glitches uh, with Halo 4, which may have been because they didn't have a beta, may have just been coincidence, but things like the bolt shot reload glitch, like glitch, the grenade throwing glitch, like jumping through walls on complex and stuff, I think that a lot of that stuff could have been patched if it was found out sooner uh, with something like a beta. At number 15, the spawning system. I think the spawning system they have with the default maps isn't good for competitive play. I think that the bases switch too much and it sort of uh, causes more randomness rather than you sort of trying to control your base and sort of pushing out from your base. And I don't think that uh, the spawning system uh, supports good competitive play, although it can be edited in Forge. Um, uh, number 16, uh, the fact that you now automatically pick up the ball and the flag, uh, something that I definitely don't like. I also don't like the ability, uh, the inability, sorry, to not be able to uh, drop the flag and getting like the oddball thrown to you uh, and like automatically picking it up is really frustrating. I love the idea of throwing the oddball. I think that's a really cool mechanic, but I just wish you had to hold a button to catch it rather than uh, like automatically being like teleported to you. Um, number 17, instant respawns. I wish that they could be editable. I think that some game modes, instant respawns might be good, more casual game modes, because it's obviously like a lot more fast paced and sort of newer players aren't going to get annoyed sort of waiting around. But I think certainly for objective game type, 
setups, the ability to properly set when you're going to respawn without like pressing X to speed up your respawn. And I think that being able to take out instant respawns in Slayer would be an amazing thing for the game. And it's so annoying that it's not in there. Uh, number 18, uh, the randomness that's been added to the game. And this is mainly with the weapons and once again, mainly only in Infinity Slayer. Uh, but the fact that ordinance is random i don't see why it couldn't be a system where everyone will get the same three weapons come up and then they could be maybe just like a needler or an overshield or plasma grenades and then if you want something better you could veto those weapons and then go to like a higher tier i hate the idea uh, that ordinance is random because it just adds randomness to the game there's a chance that the enemy team are all going to get better weapons than you and they're going to win because of the luck of those weapons also, random weapons just spawning in the map in general is just a bad idea. It just adds randomness and luck, and it's not good for competitive Halo gameplay. At number 19, uh, I think the Forge mode is very lacking. I think some of the additions that they added to it means that it's easier to build maps, but I think the Forge palette is worse than Reach. I think that although Forge World did mean a lot of the maps in Reach did look very similar, they're all kind of grey, and it's good that there's free forging spaces, but the fact of the matter is, there's just not enough big areas to build in. Like, to build anything from scratch, you've got to build it in the sky, which means you're going to use a load of your budget placing floor and all the maps are going to look the same. We need a big open flat area like we had in Halo 3 and Sandbox or Forge World and Halo Reach, and we simply don't have that. Also, it'd be been really good to have new objects to build out of rather than building pretty much out of only the same things that we had in Halo Reach. And finally, number 20, once again, a very opinion-based one, custom loadouts and uh, progressive unlocks. I don't like the idea of custom loadouts. I didn't like the idea of loadouts uh, in the first place in Halo Reach. And I don't think that needing to unlock your guns makes the game any better. I much preferred it when you all spawned with the same gun and it was just your skill that made you win. Uh, having like custom loadouts adds a bit of randomness basically because you don't know what the other players are going to have. You don't know if they got shielding, you don't know if their grenades are more powerful and because you can't see that you're sort of going in a little bit blind and it kind of adds a small amount of randomness and uh, maybe it's just me being old school but I much preferred it when everyone spawned with the same gun and it was only what you did in the game that determined the win, not what loadout you started off without the beginning of the game but anyway we've just here got to the end of the game hopefully you enjoyed this gameplay commentary leave your thoughts in the comments down below thanks for watching and i'll see you later